So this movie came out yesterday. I gotta watch it last night. I'm doing a few today. Let's get into Roadhouse. Before we start, do you have insurance? What? Your coverage good? Like, you have dental? Oh, haha. -ha. Is there a hospital nearby? Is it like too far? It's about like 25 minutes, I'd say. I just slapped you. Are you all right? What? <laughs> So you like to fight. You ever win? No one ever wins a fight. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Roadhouse is a remake of the 1980s iconic mega hit Roadhouse. And that's a movie that has such a huge cult following. But if I'm being objective here, it's honestly not that great of a film. <laughs> like, it, it's one of those 1980s films. You love it. You, you watch it all the time. It has some iconic moments in it, but just really putting the pieces together is just kind of like, um, yeah, it, 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 it's not an amazing film. Film. It's kind of like how I feel about Bloodsport. Objectively, Bloodsport is a terrible movie, but I love that movie so much. And like Roadhouse is kind of one of those movies. There's some really awesome moments in that movie, but there's some really bad moments in that movie as well. And like the more questions you start asking, the more the plot breaks apart. Like in the original one, why were they trying to you know, keep the bar a rowdy, you know, bloodbath place. They never really explain even Honest Trello's questions why the main bad guys would do this in the original one. So just little tiny things like that. And so when I heard that they were doing a remake, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. It just kind of seems like they're just trying to make money off of an already existing IP, you know, the thing Hollywood usually does. And I heard Jake Gyllenhaal was going to be, and I was like, okay, he's done some good roles, and also, I liked his role in South Park. If you don't know what South Park is, it's a boxing movie that Jake Gyllenhaal was in. I probably should do it. I don't think you've seen that film. It kind of fits the right requirements of that series, but I'm game besides myself. So I hear he's going to be in this movie, and I think nothing of it, and then I see the trailer, and it's like, oh, okay, this looks like it could be fun. But, while watching this movie, I kind of noticed that they weren't quite doing the shot-for-shot -shot remake, like some remakes do. And they weren't doing, like, what were we going to do most of They kind of went at this like they did with Magnificent Seven, which is a movie they remade a couple years back. Antoine Fuqua directed it. It starred Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke, Pierre Sarsgaard, great cast. And with that movie, they kind of took some of the core principles of the original one and, like, just did a different movie. It's like, okay, we're going to have it. Seven guys are brought in to defend this town. This town's being terrorized by uh, overwhelming power. It's going to be seven against a much larger force. And basically, that's all they kept from the original. They kind of do the same thing here with Roadhouse. It, they don't do a shot-for-shot -shot remake. There's only a handful of things from the original one that remain in this one. Case in point, there's a character named Dalton. He's not even a bouncer in this one. Uh, there's a bar that he gets hired to help clean up, and there's like a much more powerful, shady bad guy trying to, you know, get be rid of the bar. Oh, and there's like a doctor he kind of strikes up a relationship with. That's about it for the similarities. There's no. You know, him teaching the other bouncers the three tenets of being the greatest bouncer ever. There's not, you know, hushed tones about, you know, bouncers. Like, I love in the original one, bouncers basically were world renowned. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know if bouncers ever had that kind of reputation. 
<laughs> but it's just it's kind of funny like they spoke about Bowser's names in hush tones <laughs> I was like yeah. but yeah like those things I named that's kind of about it for the similarities with the original one and this one and part of me kind of likes that I kind of like that they weren't trying to emulate the original one too much and I also kind of feel like the story in this one is better than the story in the original one. I wish the original cast had this story because you can't really beat the original cast. I mean, Sam Elliott, uh, Patrick Swayze. I mean, you know, it, it was a really fun, entertaining cast. And not to say this cast, but just I kind of wish that the story was better in the original one. Now, there's some really iconic moments in the original one that they don't emulate in this one, I think for the best because, you know, you can only try to emulate so much, but you're never going to be able to pull it off as well as the original one did. And so in this one, very obviously, Jake Gyllenhaal is doing a much different job than Patrick Swayze. Uh, Patrick Swayze was kind of like this suave, smooth, um, worldly person who kind of knew everything you needed to know about being a man. In this one, Jake Gyllenhaal is a fucking psychopath. <laughs> and I kind of like it. <laughs> he, he is this like drifter, loner, doesn't know a lot, and he's just like this psychotic, quiet man. <laughs> he'll smile, he'll nod, but like, he, he, he wants to like go for the jugular every time. <laughs> Although, he doesn't. <laughs> I'm really trying not to spoil too much with this film. But, like, no, it, it's very clear that he's doing a much different character than Patrick Swayze. And I do kind of like his quiet man, psychopath type vibe he's bringing with this film. That being said... As much as Jake Gyllenhaal has put himself into this role with getting shredded and, you know, the amount of work he put into that, the one person who felt like they were having the time of their life was Conor McGregor. I mean, I'm not familiar with this guy. I know he was in MMA, but, like, personally, I've never seen the guy fight. I've never seen a full fight of his, so I don't know that much about the guy. I've, some people said, oh, he's kind of like that in real life. This movie, it really felt like he was just having as much fun as he possibly could. I mean, it really seemed like he was having the time of his life. If that's really his persona in real life, then, I mean, I guess it works for this film. But, like, just the entire time he's on screen, I was just getting the impression, like, th this guy really is enjoying this a little bit too much. <laughs> I will be surprised if like 10 years from now there's like an expose interview it's like oh yeah he was such a diva on set because I mean it seemed like he was just like okay what are we doing today cool okay let's go <laughs> you know, like that was kind of the idea the impression I was getting from him now with all that being said I had a couple of issues with this movie one of which is the whole villain rogue gallery section was kind of a mess. You look at the original one, there was like one bad guy and a couple of key henchmen. In this one, there's the main bad guy. There's his key main henchman with a biker gang that is kind of the main rival to Dalton initially. Then there's Conor McGregor's character. Then there's a never shown character in prison that's kind of the true remaster. Then there's a corrupt cop. I mean, it's just like, they should have cut like half of that and just condensed it down to like three guys. But they didn't do that. Maybe they were trying the sequel bait. I don't know. Especially with the post credit scene. That definitely was like a sequel bait. So maybe they're going to actually try and do a Roadhouse 2. Uh, to this one. Not the other one. Which really sucks. But I digress. The other thing that I felt was kind of unnecessary. Was the third act. Like 
boat sequence. Like, there's kind of like a boat chase sequence. I mean, it's not terrible, but honestly, you probably could have saved a lot of money and just made a more in-depth final battle at the roadhouse itself. Maybe have a shootout and then do the final face-off. I just kind of felt like the, the boat chase sequence didn't quite vibe with this movie as well. I like everything leading up to it, like the, um, you know, Dalton just being a psychopath to one of the henchmen for the main bad guy. And like, well, the main bad guy, I don't think was outstanding. He did actually have a few moments of like genuine laughing my ass off, especially with his first introduction involving a shave. That shit was funny. <laughs> so, Ultimately, in the end, I felt like this was, for the most part, a pretty decent remake. I don't think it's perfect, and I don't think it's going to make me never watch the original one again, because in reality, they're kind of two different movies, just like Magnificent Seven. And I guess when done in this certain way, I kind of like remakes that way. You're never going to hit lightning in the same spot, so you might as well try and hit a different spot. And with some remakes, it's just frame for frame, we'll change some dialogue and some characters' races, but it's going to be the same thing. It's like, why bother doing a remake then? Okay, why bother? With this, it's like, look, we're going to keep some of the core tenets, but for the most part, we're going to kind of do a different movie. And one could ask why call it the same thing as the last one true but at the same time you're getting kind of a new experience then so overall i thought this was a fun movie i enjoyed it i liked it uh i would say story-wise i liked it better than the original actor wise i it's kind of hard to beat the original cast in their cheesy corny silly glory <laughs> So anyway, that's been my review of 2024's Roadhouse. My name is Chris Ricardo with 11 Hour Reviews, and that will be all for today. Peter, I don't think you should be driving with your feet. Roadhouse. Wait, why are you taking the back way home? There are so many turns. Roadhouse. 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 Roadhouse.